episode 65. Hello everyone and welcome to Volpun Shopping Podcast. My name is Magdalena and this is my little kitty co-host Domarat, now, who is the mascot of this podcast. <laughs> and if you're curious, he was uh, made for me by my friend Ilona and, and I like him a lot. <laughs> So anyway, um, if you're a returning viewer, uh, thank you so much for coming back. It means so much that you that you watched me and you want to watch me again. That uh, really lifts my spirits. <laughs> and if you're a new viewer, uh, welcome. This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, uh, sewing sometimes as well, uh, hand dyeing yarn in the little town of Adlisville uh, near Zurich in Switzerland. I originally come from Poland and I live here with my husband Gleb and our three-year-old son Stasio. Um, you can find me on uh, Ravelry and Instagram under my full name, which is Magdalena Wolf with double F. And uh, if you enjoy my show, please subscribe um, here on YouTube to the channel, so this way you won't miss any updates of mine. Uh, the show notes appear in the downbar here. And uh, the helpful links I always put in the video description on YouTube. Um, we also have a Ravelry group, Wolf Muschappe Podcast Group. And uh, there you can find our, all of our giveaways and knit alongs. And I just realized this plastic bag is showing its ears here. So excuse me for that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, right now we are having a show along 2017 and uh, the, date, the deadline has just been extended till July 24th, so you still have plenty of time to, um, to knit a show together with us. So please join because we have cool prizes to win. <laughs> such as um, a skein of my hand dyed yarn, um, a pattern by uh, Emilie from Arctic Knitting Podcast, a hat pattern or a pattern of your choosing uh, by uh, any pattern of your choosing by Agata Watskiewicz. So it's very cool <laughs> and, and yeah, it's fun. Many people uh, have joined and shared their, um, their projects, their, um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting to see uh, all the ideas that you come up with and, and I look forward to seeing more of them. So yes, feel free to join and um, this is it for for the announcements and now we could start with knitting I suppose. So first up my Asagi top by uh, Bristol Ivy. Oh what okay <laughs> so last time I was showing this to you it was not yet joined in the round and but now it is and looks like this. Oh, the needles are piercing the fabric everywhere. Uh, so yeah, it's still not too big, but I finished... I'll show this best. Yeah, this, this is uh, the front yoke. So I was knitting them separately. First the left one, then the right one. And now uh, they are joined together, which is very interesting for me because I've never knitted anything uh, that was constructed this way. And the yarn that I'm using is Queen of Pearls that I bought at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year. And it's, uh, the base is Ballista and colorway is Siren Song. These are large skeins of 150 grams and it's 100% uh, superwash merino, non-mulesed. 
which is which is important. I also wanted to mention that all of my merino yarns, Wolfenschappe yarns, are also from the source that has a, a non-mule sink certificate because, yeah, um, we don't want the sheep to suffer, right? While we enjoy their wool. Uh, so yeah, um, I did not work that much on this project simply because uh, most of the week I was away, which I will talk more about later. Uh, but yeah, I'm loving this project. This is how how the well sleeves, shoulders look like, and I find it just gorgeous. There will be uh, still some finishing here going on, as far as I understand. But yeah, right now it's just awesome. It's just beautiful. Here it's just plain stockinette. And here we have these beautiful leaves. Awesome. And the needles that I'm using are uh, here. <laughs> and they are uh, Knit Pro interchangeables in 3.5 millimeter size, which is US size 4, if I'm not wrong. And the cable that I'm using is right now, uh, after I've joined uh, the whole body. Oh, look at the lace! Woo! Uh, it's 80 centimeters, so it's around 32 inches long, and it's perfect because after I've um, I finished with the second yoke, uh, front yoke. Uh, I had the cable of 60 centimeters, which was perfect for this portion of the project. But then it was just uh, the the stitches were too crammed on my needles. So, so 80 centimeters is just perfect, and that's what the pattern says anyway. But Again, I'm loving how I can adjust the length of my uh, cable because these are interchangeable needles. So, yay! <laughs> and oh yes, what I wanted to say is that I I've joined the uh, knit along with this project, and it's um, called uh, Summer Garment Knit Along. Um, co-hosted by Anna from Dunkelgrün, who's my friend and lives in Zurich, and uh, Celeste from Yarn to Table podcast. So they, they are co-hosting this knit along and the deadline is still the end of August, so still plenty of time. And uh, yeah, I think it's reasonable because it's supposed to be garments and they, they tend to take more time to, uh, than, than uh, shawls, right? And other smaller items, but um, also child garments are allowed. So check out that um, knit along if you're interested. And yeah, I'm hoping I will uh, finish this on time. Because yeah, still a lot of time. So I'm hopeful. <laughs> But with me and garments, you can never know, actually. Hmm. I'm drinking a mysterious tea today uh, because I've had this tin with some tea that I thought I knew what it, what it was, but I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> and I was... Yeah, I, I, I just... Don't know what it is, but but still, it's good. It's okay. And surely is not a sencha tea, but it's tea. It's good. Uh, yeah. So next up, um, the project that went with me. Where is it? Honestly, where? Oh, it's in front of me. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, living in my uh, Molly Klein design Uber unicorn bag, <laughs> it's extreme, extremely unicorny and rainbowy, um, lives uh, the project, the only project that I took with me on my trip 
my short trip to southern Italy where my sister is on her scholarship and I, I went there uh, without uh, check-in uh, suitcase only with my backpack and I had to fit the sho shoes for um, swimming and because there are many stony uh, shores there and uh, and a beach towel and some clothes and you know um, my backpack was pretty full and it uh, only one project could fit in so I took this and as you can see they have grown these are my anniversary socks I call them because I'm making them for August 6th, 6th which is our uh, sixth uh, wedding anniversary glow and mine and these are for him uh, so uh, I was here last week so I knitted all this and then the heels because they tend to take more time than simple stockinette knitting so yeah I'm happy they are done and now only oh <laughs> brainless knitting again and I used um, I'm using uh, where is it the rusty ferret uh, yarn with this cute logo and the base is called doll and the colorway is idiot proof it's 70 it's classical so, uh, sock yarn so it's 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon and the other, the contrasting yarn, Ugh, everything gets tangled. Oh, it's here. So it's a uh, Volmeiser twin, 80% uh, merino superwash and 20% nylon in the pot splits colorway. And it's this. Beautiful. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's beautiful yet manly. Because, yeah, that's important. <laughs> and this is the beautiful Rusty Ferret one. Oh, I'm so in love with this. And it was so awesome to knit on this project while sitting on the beach because the sea had these various colors, maybe less of those uh, grayish blues because it was very, very sunny. But anyway, it matched so well with, with my environment. It was amazing. So, uh, yeah, and I'm knitting on my chow goose. Yeah, I, uh, I had no problems whatsoever uh, in the, uh, with the security, with my needles being in my uh, hand luggage. So yay for that. Uh, and I, I, I really enjoy knitting with my chow goose anyway, because uh, last episode I told you I switched from my higher higher sharps to these because I only have one set of higher higher sharps for socks so I didn't want to lose them uh, at the security so anyway uh, this is a very long cable of 120 centimeters and uh, needles are my go-to size for sock knitting which is 2.5 millimeters US size 1.5 and let's look one more time at this oh my goodness I'm loving it and there is my progress keeper from Paris so Eiffel Tower with ladybug so cute <laughs> Yeah, it makes me smile when I'm knitting. Mm. So this is this project. And as for the construction, it's my go-to uh, way of uh, um, knitting vanilla socks. So it's um, Judy's Magical Cast On. I cast on 24 stitches. So 12, 12 for, uh, per 12 per needle 
and then, then I increased by make one um, until I had 64 stitches which is my go-to size for male socks my go-to size for female socks is 56 stitches and then I just knit I had um, Gleb's uh, cardboard foot with me uh, in Italy I took it so I could measure when I should start uh, the fish lips kiss heel. So the cardboard instructions for making the cardboard foot of of your friend or family member or yourself. Um, all it, this all can be found in the uh, fish lips kiss heel um, pattern, which is only one dollar. So it's completely worth it, and it's it all always fits like a glove. So so awesome and and yeah if you're not familiar it's uh, it's usable both for toe up knitting and cup down knitting so anyway you're knitting um, it will help you uh, decide when to start your heel so this is it and oh I must say that um, because I could only take one project with me and I did have some time on the plane uh, to knit, I felt a bit, you know, I, I'm i used to um, variety in my knitting and now it was like, if I am to knit, it's only this project. And I felt so, how, how to say it, uh, um, yeah. I sometimes felt annoyed at that fact <laughs> because uh, yeah it would be more fun to to change things a little bit but still um, as I said it was fun to knit on these on the beach um, next up is my so since I was away it's mostly this project that got the la love this week then next up is my long-term project and when I say long it is long <laughs> so this is the uh, brioche basics scarf by Susanna Zoma also known as Sosu from Sosu from the beginning of her name and last name and only this much has been done So I'm starting to feel annoyed with this project and this is absolutely not because of the pattern because it's it's amazing and it's a great um, introduction to brioche. I'm very very grateful that it is for free and I could just try it out. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's just I realized I hate knitting scarves. After knitting scarves for many years, well, a scarf per year, let's say, or even less, uh, when I realized all the possibilities of knitting world, I just, I just forgot that it's pretty dull. <laughs> Those short rows that you go uh, back and forth, back and forth, is just, yeah, it's just a bit boring. But I love the effect, I must say. It's just awesome. It's my watermelon scarf. And the needles that I'm using are Haya Haya uh, 3.5 millimeter needles, which is again US size 4. And these are not Haya Haya sharps. As you can see, it's this uh, green cable. So it, they are they have regular tips, but I love them. I don't think I would need uh, such sharp needles for this project. And the yarn that I'm using is uh, my hand dyed yarn. And you can see, well, the the cakes have become a bit smaller, which is which is a good thing. <laughs> and uh, these are my hand dyed yarn, Wolf und Schafe Likos DK which is 100% superwash BFL, Blue Faced Leicester. And this colorway is Toad's Tools Fantasy and this is Cherry Smile. 
and together they create this watermelon image <laughs> that I love so much. And now is the season for watermelons. My husband loves them so much and Stasia also. So <laughs> you should see him when, when my husband cuts the watermelon and then Stasia is like mm, and then he's all sticky. <laughs> So anyway, I'm hoping I, I'm getting closer to the end of this project because I love the effect. I don't really love the, the process. So yeah. Um, but since I got so, well, bored with knitting on the uh, same project all the time and annoyed with this project, I felt like I need a new project. I just... I just need something new to make me excited because that's what it is about, isn't it? So, oh, some tea. So, I'm very excited about this project. And first, I will show you the yarn. If you've been watching the podcast for a while, you might even recognize it. It's appeared on the podcast ages ago. Uh, this is my hand spun yarn that I have spun from um, Porpoise Fur uh, Shetland in the Delta colorway. So it was um, more or less 100 grams, 113 grams to be precise, um, braid, top braid that I spun and um, and then plied it uh, Navajo ply uh, with Navajo plying technique to keep the sections of color. So as you can see, it's this uh, blue, then brown, then yellow, uh, and well, the green was created by blending yellow and turquoise, and then turquoise. So uh, to to preserve. These sections I just Navajo plied it, so this is a, a three ply yarn, and uh, and I'm actually surprised because it stayed in my stash for for a while. I didn't have uh, the like precise idea for this this yarn, and I'm pretty happy with how it turns out. Like it's really um, even. <laughs> You know, for hand, hand spun, I'm really happy with how it looks like, and it's also very fluffy and 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 um, and bouncy. And I love the colors. It's just oh my god! It also it's a very summery uh, uh, palette. I'd say it really reminds me of my time in Italy. I must say, and it's uh, more or less it's a decay weight. And I have 258 meters per 113 grams. So it's, yeah, more or less between DK and worsted, probably. And I decided to knit a shawl with it. And this is where I am. And you guys, believe it or not, but I cast it on yesterday. So I got so excited by this project that I just couldn't stop knitting on it. And also, of course, because the yarn is quite thick, uh, it grows so much faster. But the idea is uh, that it will be a triangular shawl. So we have this spine here with yarn overs. And we have them here as well. Can you see it? Can you see it? Do, do, do. So yeah, there are yarn overs here as well. And then I decided to um, to add a row of eyelets at the point where the um, mm, how do you say it? The transition of the colors starts. So. The turquoise is entering our fabric, so uh, so then I put the eyelets in, and I'm intending on doing it when I 
I'm done with turquoise and the yellow stars and and so on. So uh, I'm just mostly making things up as I go, even though I have <laughs> I have <laughs> some plans uh, in this cute little uh, notebook for uh, primary school children I bought in Japan. <laughs> Uh, with Pokemon. Anyway, um, this is this is the notebook. I might have shown this to you before. I just I just keep notes of any projects that I um, I don't knit from a pattern, so that if I ever want to repeat them, I just will know how I did that. And so. Um, I don't know how big the shawl will be from this one's skin. I will see. But I thought that maybe it would be cool to make a big shawl uh, from this thick yarn. And then um, I would also add a, another skein of DK weight. And I'm thinking this. So uh, this skein ends with with, again, with the navy blue, more or less, and I thought they would look good together. But we will see what happens. This is this is the same base that I'm knitting on um, on my scarf. This is my logo. <laughs> so this is Lika's Decay, 100% uh, Superwash Merino, in the Brunhilda colorway. It's my darker version of honey colorway that I used for my Ashling shawl, if, if any of you remember. So this is this is DK weight. This is more or less DK weight. I think they might look good. So um, I'm not sure how it all turns out, but I found some uh, inspiration uh, on the internet and um, I found some um, like stitch pattern for borders there would be uh, well i'm planning on keeping this uh, shawl pretty much simple because we have the um, the color uh, changes that make um, make it busy enough but uh, since the border would be in a solid color I might do some eyelets and stuff like that. No, nothing very complicated for sure. And the needles that I'm using are these. These are uh, Knit Pro uh, Carbons in 4mm size, which is your size 6. And I'm enjoying knitting on this so much. It is not my first time knitting with Shetland because I've spun some uh, minis for, well, one mini, actually, for my uh, Cozy Memories blanket. But it's the first um, big project with Shetland and it's fun. And since, as I said, the, the yarn is so squishy and and bouncy, it's, it's very cool. Of course, it's not as uh, buttery soft as Merino. There's no such chance because it's Shetland wool, but but it's just wonderful. And as I remember, it was uh, very, very nice to spin with. Because Merino, um, even though it's, you know, it's so lovely and soft, it's not the easiest fiber to spin because the staple length is pretty short. And with Shetland or BFL, it's easier. Anyway, this is this is my hand spun shawl, and I'm I'm very very excited about it. Um, so I'm I'm excited because it's the yarn that I have spun myself, and uh, I'm making it up <laughs> as I go. So I'm improvising. So it's very very exciting to me. I know some of you, uh, my thing is oh, it's just a simple shawl like. Man, <laughs> but for me it's something really exciting. So, um, so yeah, I'm I started hi hyperventilating. <laughs> so let's have some more tea.
if you're wondering what this is, because I keep showing my hand, um, I fell. Well, in in uh, Pizzo in Calabria, I just I just fell on the very um, nasty um, stony ground, and and I lost some skin here. Ouch! But it's it's fine now. It's really. Um, it's really okay. It just looks nasty. My son was very like when he said, "Oh, mommy, it must hurt." <laughs> and he was very so like, "You should put some uh, band-aid on it or something like that." But yeah, it's it's already past it, that uh, phase. So yeah, uh, now we can start with a new section in. There will be spinning this week. As for those of you who are not familiar, um, in July, uh, Tour de Fleece has started, and it's an event that is connected to Tour de France. France? Oh God, I can't pronounce. Tour de France, and um, the basic idea is. Uh, those guys are spinning their, their bike wheels and we are spinning our uh, spinning wheels or our spindles, whatever so we, we spin together. And last year I tried to participate like every day they were, they were uh, biking, I would, I would spin as well. But it's not an easy task and especially in July, usually people go on vacation or whatever, it doesn't um, make it easy. But anyway, I got I got pretty motivated, uh, and and maybe the, my trip made me more excited about new projects. Uh, so yeah, so I finally finished this yarn. I love it. So this is um, this little skein I intend for my blanket. And I don't know if you can see it, but it has this fine, like, sh it's shiny because of the sea salt content. So it's from this, this braid, see this pint? Uh, and uh, the colorway is Lupinen. And it's a 70% blue faced Lester wool and 30% sea, sea cell. And as you can see, I still have plenty of it, and it's very, very soft and lovely. And very nice to spin. And I'm loving the effect. So, as you can guess, uh, it was the purple portion of the fiber, but some of, of the yellow also entered here, creating those purplish golden strands that make it very pretty. <laughs> and it's a single ply um, yarn. Um, it's 16 grams only, so it's really a tiny little thing. 51 and a half meters. And it will go to, into my blanket one day. <laughs> um, next up I started uh, spinning on my spindle as well because I freed it from from this skein and <laughs> oh my god this is so sparkly and glittery you cannot even imagine so it will also be a single ply yarn also for my blanket because yeah that's the perfect project for this this kind of um, spinning and yeah on the camera you cannot really see but all those colorful strands here they they are shiny they glitter and um, this is uh, a bat that I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Festival this, this year from Spin City. And it was actually the first purchase that I made <laughs> at the festival this year. So, 
So this is this bat. It's a hundred gram bat. It's glorious. I love all those blues. And maybe now you can see how it shines. Yesterday my husband was very surprised when he found something this sparkly in our bed, like one of the of those fluffs just entered our bed and he's like, what's this? And I was like, unicorn. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know exactly what's in here because there was no tag. Mm, it's it's a mixture of wool and, uh, and these sparkly objects, <laughs> elements. But yeah, it's just it's um, just something uh, spun for fun, if I can say so. I don't see really a bigger project for from this fiber, but it will be perfect to to make more shiny uh, squares in my blanket. I'm sorry, I cannot really cannot really show you show this to you very well because it turns out dark on the on the camera but yeah this, this and this is my favorite spindle and i bought it uh last year in edinburgh and it's just awesome i love working with this and now um my third third spinning project um I decided to dust off my spinning wheel, my kiwi, and um, where is it? Where is it? So I can show you what I'm working on. So some time ago, I suppose last year or so, I purchased this bat. Isn't this glorious? I have. A really weak spot for rust with turquoise. It's just, mm, I I love it, and it's from Port Fiber, and the name is Hot Rocks Cool Streams. It's three point nine uh, pe uh, ounces, and this is. 17% baby camel, 7% 7 cashmere, 34% merino, can you see it? Okay. Um, 24% silk, 11% uh, something I don't know how to pronounce, <laughs> targi, please let me know if you know what it is, I have no idea, and 7% uh, silk. So the all this mixture is quite amazing and I will be honest it's not the easiest fiber to spin because again very short staple length very very fine fibers but I think it will be awesome <laughs> once I'm done with it and uh, I got it when my husband went uh, to the States because he sometimes visits um, the um, his company there and um, he he was staying for like two weeks so I decided I will just order there and he will bring this to me so it's from the States and I've this divided this bat into more or less two like more or less even parts and I'm intending on spinning, um, on, uh, on making a two-ply yarn and getting more or less a fingering weight yarn. Uh, so that's, that's my plan and now um, I will try and show this to you on my spinning wheel. Now you will see my messy shelves. So this is what I have so far. This is the fluffy fiber here. And as you can see the, the thread is pretty fine. I started too fine even because it started breaking and I couldn't find a spot where it would be okay. But right now I think I got it. I hope I got it. 
and what I wanted to say is those uh, spots of blue that you can see they are oh like here they create those fun um, like bumps it will be more of a art yarn I'd say I'm not a fan really of art yarns but this is fun to make so <laughs> and and it's such a beautiful color so I don't know which of the contents it is the turquoise but it uh, it tends to create those those bumps I don't know if you can see it so it makes uh, for a more interesting texture of the yarn so yeah this fiber this is just a cloud I could I could use this as a pillow it's so awesome and this is just a half of the fiber I have the other half starts there and uh, yeah oh yeah this is what I was talking about the the parts of blue that, that create those like they they look like sometimes they look like uh, tweed so that you can imagine it and yeah it's it's pretty awesome and I'm happy that I finally got my courage to start working on it because it was uh, it's so beautiful and it was uh, living on my shelf for quite a while and I I I felt I'm not confident a spinner enough to start working on it and right now it just makes me happy that I have started and I hope I don't screw it up <laughs> fingers crossed um, so yeah uh, this is it for spinning and uh, no sewing this week uh, because I was mostly away so I didn't have the opportunity to make anything uh, but there is some dyeing that I've done uh, I have created uh, two new colorways and oh, it got pretty dark right now it's a bit cloudy so it gets darker uh, so yeah uh, first up is this this pink which I love. I love this pink. So it's it's very delicate pinks with some hot pink speckles and some spots of of very subtle yellow. You can see here. This uh, this base is my sock base, which is Wolfgang Schaffer. Um, in, uh, and the colorway that I chose for it is Harmony and that is because it's been inspired by a um, character from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel she also appears there um, some of you know that I'm a great fan of Buffy I, ju I just love this show it's so awesome and uh, Harmony <laughs> is a really fun character uh, so this was inspired by her and she she does lo love pink she does and the other skein is this and it's the same base and this one is those really really subtle blues with some hot pink and purple speckles and also no it's if it's visible here oh maybe here some green ones too so this is how it looks like and it it has actually been also inspired by the harmony character so um long story short uh, there is one episode already of the comic book series because the TV show I'm sorry, I'm just adjusting the blurriness uh, so uh, in the comic book she lays her hands on a great um, magical book that uh, controls 
more or less, um, the magic in the world. And she tells her the 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 guy that was helping her, she she was dictating to him uh, what he should write there, and there were many really silly things there. But he actually wrote down one of the things she really wanted, and it was, quote, uh, unicorns are totally real. <laughs> so she made unicorns real. <laughs> and and that's the, the name of this colorway. And I had a lot of fun creating them. So... Uh, you will find them in the shop, I hope, today, if you're interested. Also, I do have um, more yarns that you can find in my shop, in my Etsy shop. So, uh, if you're interested in any colorways you see on my podcast, you can, you can send me a note and ask me, because maybe I have it. So, I can also... Uh, I also accept custom orders, so just saying. And yeah, this is it for the crafting part this week. And now my last segment called life in general. First up, my iron infusion was successful. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy about it. I was quite stressed with it and but uh, this time uh, my husband went with me I asked him to go with me to be my moral support and um, yeah we tried to make me not faint <laughs> and we succeeded and I feel so much better you have no idea it's just such a change um, and it was great also because we did that before I went to Italy, so I felt much better than I would have. So uh, just just a little piece of advice. If you feel a weak person, you, you don't like doing sports and you feel really crappy about it, check your iron level because it might be it. It's not that you're, you are uh, just not fit, it might be that you just lack uh, this very important um, thing in your blood and it makes you feel like a jello. So, so yeah, uh, I feel really great after, after this infusion and oh goodness, I'm so happy. Uh, next up, my uh, trip to southern Italy, where my sister is right now. I visited her for two and a half days. Mm, we had a uh, great fun, except for the fact that there was a heat wave uh, that was really hot for even for that region of southern Italy. It is it is hot there in general, like in November they have 23 degrees, I was told, which is for Poland, it's like late August. <laughs> but anyway... Um, it was very hot. It was extremely hot. It was between 37 and 40 degrees every day. And uh, that's, that's uh, the reason we did not go sightseeing at all. We just tried to survive by being at, at the beach. And also, I'm not a fan of uh, sunbathing. And so I was putting a lot of uh, sunscreen on, my, on myself, like uh, number 50, which is almost uh, the highest you can get. But I still got sunburned, like a bit on my back and a bit on my front. Mm, but we just had to go into the water. We were sitting on the beach and we were sweating because it was so hot. So we had to enter the sea and just stay there. It was really hot. But we also had a lot of uh, chatting done while we were there. So it was a nice uh, quality time together. Mm. And yeah, the food was delicious. I had uh, 
spaghetti with mussels two times <laughs> and uh, and some other delicious things mm, and what else yeah um, this is mostly it uh, the the town where we were staying pizza it's um, it's a very pretty little town that has a castle from Spanish times and and it's it's really really nice except for it was so hot you could barely breathe B breathe but yeah um, the photos turns out, turned out really nice <laughs> and uh, at the end of this episode I will post a little video that I made and some pictures for your entertainment and lastly uh, I've recently I've purchased uh, like a package of audiobooks. Uh, these are all Sherlock Holmes books read by Stephen Fry. So I did not know it existed until I stumbled upon it on Amazon and I was like oh my goodness I have to have it and since I have this account at Audible it means you can either pay money for it or have and, and it's considerable amount of money because it's so many books or have the whole thing for one credit. So I did not even think much. I just I just hit the buy now button and that was it. So I have Stephen Fry talking to me again and I love Sherlock Holmes. I read a couple of the, the original books but but it's still fun to listen to them again. And yeah, uh, this is, I think, it for this week. Um, next week, I think there won't be an episode and the week after that, I'm afraid, also nothing because we're going to Poland and uh, our son goes to a Lake District with my parents and Glev and I go to Montenegro for a week to have uh, some, yeah, some vacation together. And then we stay a couple of days and then we are going back to Switzerland. So during that time I will be traveling and I won't have any means of making a podcast. Which, which is a pity, but I promise there will be some video footage and some pictures in the, the first episode after our holidays. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Where are you, my kitty? <laughs> happy knitting, uh, happy holidays. Uh, remember about our shawl along and uh, we will see you next time. Yeah. Bye! So guys, today it's gonna be 38 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit, as I'm aware it's 100 degrees. Oh, hot and here we see my sister. Hello, I love Calabria. <laughs> yeah, she is my guide. <laughs> and uh, we're going there to that beach. It's hot. It's beautiful. But hot. I got a little bit of sunburn.